The following two-part video is about the nomenclature of polyatomic ionic compounds and some acids. Polyatomic ionic compounds are compounds that have more than two types of elements, where you can have a cation with an anion that is polyatomic. The acids that we'll focus on are the ones that have the hydrogen cation, and the anion are polyatomic and they may or may not have oxygen. First, let's start with polyatomic ionic compounds. A polyatomic ion is a covalent molecule that has an ionic charge. In this table, we can see different polyatomic ions with a net charge of negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and positive 1. So let's write the name of different compounds following these directions. The first thing to do is to write the name of the cation. Okay, so for the first one, it would be calcium. And calcium only has uh, one oxidation of state, plus two. So there is no need to write a Roman numeral next to it. And then we use the name of the polyatomic ion listed on the table. So NO3 is nitrate. So this would be calcium nitrate. And then the last thing to do is to make sure that the charge adds up to zero. Okay, so the way you do that is there is one calcium for every two nitrate ions. We know that calcium has a positive two charge. And from the table, we know that nitrate has a negative one charge. So by multiplying 1 times positive 2, we get plus 2. And 2 times negative 1, we get negative 2. So this equals to 0. So this is a neutral compound. Let's look at the second one. So we have copper. And copper has two oxidation of states, positive 1 or positive 2. So we, we need to have a Roman numeral next to it, but we don't know which one yet. And then SO4 is sulfate. And we see that it has a net charge of negative 2. So this would become copper sulfate. Then we need to make sure that the charges add up to 0. So we know that this sulfate has a negative 2 charge. And there is one sulfate ion for every one copper ion. Remember that the charge and the subscript affects the whole ion in parentheses. Okay, so if we multiply 1 times negative 2, we get negative 2. And then this has to be added to something that gives you 0. So this must be positive 2. So the charge of copper is positive 2 because. 1 times positive 2 gives you plus 2. So this is copper 2 sulfate. The last compound is lithium. And lithium only has a plus 1 charge. And the next one is chromate from the table. So this would be lithium chromate. Okay, so checking for neutrality, we know that lithium is a plus one. And from the table, we know that chromate is a negative two. So there is one chromate ion for every two lithiums. So we multiply ta two times positive one for the lithium plus 2, and then we multiply 1 chromate ion times negative 2, that gives 0. We can also find the formulas from the names. Okay, so for the first example, we have silver phosphate. Let's write the ions separately. So the cation is silver, and we know that it only has a plus 1 charge. And phosphate is right here. So it's phosphorus, oxygen 4, and it has a negative 3 net charge. The next thing is to cross the charges. 
So we get silver 3, phosphate. And there is one phosphate ion for every three silver ions. Okay, so we can also check for neutrality. So we put the one that is implicit and also the parentheses that are implicit. A plus one for the silver and a negative three for the phosphate ion. So we multiply three times positive one, we get plus three, and one times negative three, and we get negative three. So this equals zero. And this is neutral as it should be. The next one is iron two hypochlorite. Okay, so we know that iron is a two plus from the name, and hypochlorite is right here, is chloride, oxygen, and a negative one charge. We cross the charges, and we get iron hypochlorite, like this. We can also check for neutrality, but it's about the same procedure as before. The last one is ammonium nitrate. Okay, so in this case, we have a cation that is also a polyatomic ion, and an anion nitrate that is also a polyatomic ion. So in this case, we have two polyatomic ions. So nitrate is right here. Okay, so let's start by writing the two ions separately. So the positive cation and nitrate, the negative ion. Okay, we cross the charges and we get one to one ratio. And it has to be neutral. Lastly, we can also find the oxidation of the states of each of the atoms that make up a polyatomic ion. For example, we can find the oxidation state of phosphorus and oxygen in this phosphate ion. To do that, we do the following. We put a parenthesis to make sure that the negative 3 charge affects all of the ion. Then we know that the charge of oxygen is negative 2. We need to find the charge of phosphorus. There is a 1 to 4 ratio of phosphorus to oxygen. Okay, so multiplying the 4 atoms of oxygen times the negative 2 charge, we get negative 8. Then we add 1 atom of phosphorus times some number, which is the oxidation state of phosphorus. This has to be equal to a net charge of negative 3. So this unknown number must be equal to positive 5. So the charge of phosphorus is positive 5. And that of oxygen is negative 2. OK, the next one is the hypochlorite ion. In this case, we put also the parentheses. Oxygen is a negative 2 charge. There is a 1 to 1 ratio of chlorine to oxygen. And we need to find the charge of chlorine. So multiplying the 1 oxygen atom times the negative 2 charge, we get negative 2 plus 1 atom of chlorine times some number that is the oxidation of state of chlorine should give us a net, negative 1 net charge. So that number must be positive 1. Okay, so the chlorine charge is positive 1, and that of oxygen is negative 2. The next one is the ammonium ion and the nitrate ion. So in this case, we put parentheses, and hydrogen is an N ion in this case, and it should take a negative 1 charge. And we need to find the charge of nitrogen. So in this case, we multiply four atoms of hydrogen times the negative one. So it gives us negative four plus 
one atom of nitrogen times some charge equals a positive one net charge. So that oxidation of a state should be positive five. Okay, so in this case, nitrogen has a positive five oxidation of state and hydrogen has a negative one oxidation of state. In the case of the nitrate ion, oxygen is negative two, nitrogen is something that we need to find, and there is a one to three ratio of nitrogen to oxygen. Multiplying three oxygen times negative two gives us negative six, and multiplying one atom of nitrogen times some oxidation of state should give us a net negative one charge. So that oxidation of state should be plus five. So here also we have a plus five charge for nitrogen and oxygen has a negative two charge. Now you can try these problems yourself. And here are the answers.